Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first episode of the Year of Our Lord 2024. This is the Ging and Pedro Show. I am, of course, your host, Gingy McDonald, alongside me, Pedro A. It's yeah, Pedro Angus from the Highlands. I don't know what... Are you coming on hard Scottish this year or what? No, but I figured I'd mix it up. You know, we're going yeah. to keep this shit live, buddy. And alongside us, of yeah, course, yeah. we've got yeah. riding in the third chair, the chariot, yeah. Mr. Ron yeah. from Romo Art. I'm sorry, Ron. Romo. I won't. I won't yeah. even try to. Anyways, yeah. let, 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 let's not. Let's <laughs> I'm not, not going to do not, an accent, so I don't know. Yeah, just, <laughs> let's not lose the topic because you're already a redhead. Okay. You call yourself Ginger McDonald, and you're doing like a full like Black Supper mm. introduction. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Are you trying to tell me something? Did you buy one of those like one I've meter learning patch the bass of guitar? Earth? Yeah, like that that patch of earth that makes you like a Scottish lord. Have you made that uh, investment? No, I, no. Um, from as far as I know, actually, my ancestry is German and mm, uh, okay. British. Okay. Um, yeah, but not specifically Scottish or Irish, even though I've got the red hair, but the red comes yeah. from my mom's side, and I don't know. Okay. We, don't, we don't really know anything about that. I know. But supposedly, we're in, some some version of Indian, like, not very much, but everybody says that. Literally, everybody says yeah, everybody that. I'm, a, like, uh, I'm an eighth Cherokee. A little, a little I Cherokee think, in me. I think most yeah. of us are from incubator parents that were born in, like, 1901, yeah. honestly, mm-hmm. in the yeah. old world fair. Right mm. on. Getting Whoa, the old world fair. Yeah. The old world fair. Yep. Nice. Hey, baby, you want to check out my watch collection? Right. <laughs> yeah. These time pieces. Yeah. You want to check my steam machine, baby? Here we go. Mm. Uh oh. We got J Bot in the house. He says, in yeah, the year of J-Bot. sweet baby Jesus, 2024. 2024. Absolutely. Hey, J-Bot. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, Great artist himself. What we'll to have him on here sometime? He says, yeah. yo, smash that like, homies. Yeah, dude. Thank you, sir. Mr. J Bot. Yeah, Jay's got oh, some exciting God. stuff going on. Bears yeah, Then an- mm-hmm. another project. I he announced the other day, but I'll let I don't know if it's I don't know if he's if talking about it yeah. live still or uh oh. Look this troublemaker. We've got Chris Fisk in the house. And hey, hey, hey. Yeah, right. <laughs> nice. I Chris had a buddy of mine. Uh I don't know how I mean you would never tell at all that he was quote unquote Indian. But uh, I had a buddy of mine get his paperwork and uh, take mm-hmm. advantage of a full ride scholarship to. Um, wow! Because you had a little Cherokee. That's you. I don't know what it was, but I mean, nah. Um, my part of Florida in, in Panama City, um, well, mm-hmm. Bay County. There's like. Uh, Chippewa. We had Seminole. Yeah, well, that's that's closer, I think, to the east, north, and to the east. Mm-hmm. Um, our okay. area, we, there's this place called Econfina, and I think we had like Blackfoot or Creekfoot here. Yeah, yeah, Creekfoot. Mm. And uh, Econfina, they now make bottled water. Nice. As they do. Yep, so conquered and turned their, their natural glory into drinking water. Into filtered water. <laughs> Stuck it, nerds. <laughs> nice. Yeah, they do. Gotta make a living. Yeah, dude. Hey, hey, yeah, steampunk. I believe he means steampunk sure. Willie, sure. but he says we'll be out in 2024. Mm, nice. Yeah, man. Mm, steampunk Willie. Right, boys. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, without further ado, we're going to watch I'm this amazing clip. Yeah. Well, if we if we want to pull the clip up now, I was going to switch over to, to some other. Oh, okay. Clip. It's your show. Yeah. It's your, I, I thought we were going to do the clip. Just, it's okay. Mm-hmm. I'm flying by the seat of my pants here. And, and just to Correct, real quick. J Bot says, "No, yeah. no, no, steampunk, silly." Okay, wonderful. It means what right. he says. Yeah, I oh, didn't steampunk, mean to silly. Right, gotcha. Don't, don't, yeah. yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, and you're welcome on the show it's too. His project. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Let's go. Sounds great. Mm-hmm. All right, so, all right, I'm gonna leave it up to you, Pedro. Are we doing the clip or are we going to some art? Buddy? So me. Put the on you. Mm-hmm. Oh Jesus decision. Christ. Do it. Uh, okay, uh, let's pull up a video first, and then I'll get something ready. Is okay. I All might, right. I might so, have something I, I can work on, so I'm gonna mm-hmm. just do it. All right, so I'll, I'll go ahead and pull this up here. I figured uh-huh. we'd have some fun before we get to the drawing here, gang. And I, and I don't. Uh, and here, let me go ahead and 
Well, actually, I'll do it after. Roll that beautiful footage. All right, so we're doing it. So, a la Shane at Pappy Davis. I just pulled him up because it's relevant. But uh, All right, so I, I stopped a little bit past here, but let's go ahead and rewind it. I didn't watch all this. I just got to play with 30 seconds and was like, wow, this has to be played on the show. So I don't know. This is an Echo TV show. I'm very out of the loop on Marvel yeah. MCU. So as we should. Um, but it, coincidentally, I did get this for Christmas, guys. And I'm actually I am slightly happy to see Daredevil on screen there. But I, I just started mm. this today. Oh, Frank nice. Myers, uh, Daredevil. So Very this beautiful. is like the juice right here. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyways, that's why I'm drawing a Daredevil today. Actually, I've been just sort of really vibing on the character. But all right, so let's play this horse's ass, shall we? Mm -hmm. uh, Up here, your horse's ass. No. Can y'all hear that? Yeah. Well, you should pause it a bit. Should I? Okay. All right. All right. Well, hang on. Let me let me restart it then. Yeah. All right. So we're we're we got Daredevil here and uh, Echo, whom I'm not very familiar with. I, I won't even try. Yeah. To, she, I did not she's know. deaf. Okay. I think she's Figured. deaf. Right. The Echo she's missing a leg. Deaf. Yeah. Yeah, and she's missing a leg. Okay. All right. Wait, wait, no. The thing is, mm -hmm. none of them have got. Wrong. Oh no. Um. In the in the original book she wasn't missing a leg is this the actress oh, right. is missing a leg or is this i think the, i think the actress is missing a leg so the and actress people... herself is actually missing a leg but it's not i part of think the so hmm. no i mean they showed it on the on the in the in the comics on the, in hawkeye mm -hmm. okay so in the comics when i read when, when david i think it was david mm -hmm. mack that created her during the mm -hmm. daredevil run um mm -hmm. I, she did not have a missing leg. She only she had full. She was extremely graceful, full ballerina, and yeah, she had no she had no hearing. So her eyes mm -hmm. were like her superpower, photographic reflexes, uh -huh. memory, that sort of thing. Okay, uh -huh. I can kind of dig that. Really cool character, by the way. I think it was David Mack that created her. Um, yeah. it was during mm -hmm. Bendis's run, right in the beginning of Bendis's run on Daredevil. Mm. Um, very well written. Right on. Yeah, no, I, I can dig it. Okay, let, let's play this. My guess is that this lady is missing a leg. For that, I will not. Yeah, I, the thing, the thing is, that I, I think, I mean, I did saw Hawkeye, and then I, yeah. I tried to, I, I poured bleach on my eyes, but I did saw Hawkeye, and uh, I think the character, the, the the actress, is missing a leg, and people are, are oh, calling the, the, the fight scene like this is sloppy and it looks like dancing, mm. and it seems like like Daredevil is waiting for her. Yeah. So we might be making fun of a handicapped person. I don't know. Like, yeah. I'm not they sure. Don't put a handicapped person in a fight scene. I mean, I don't know what they want. You know what I mean? It's yeah, yeah. whatever, dude. The actress is no, missing. Don't call it sky blue, even though it's blue. The actress. Yeah, is yeah exactly. Is like, okay, so then okay. Uh, so this is this is my problem. Then it's not our fault. They're nope. the ones who are making fun of a handicapped person mm -hmm. and putting yeah, her in exactly. a fight scene. Not us. I don't care. Mm -hmm. They may as yeah. well just put a dunce cap on her and send her out there. Yeah, and then oh, yeah, God. dude. Yeah, because the thing is, like the, the 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 this fight is very sloppy, and that mm -hmm. might be the reason. So I will refrain from laughing at it. Yo yo yo! You know what what I mean? in the house. He says, "What's up, total excellence?" Yeah, what's up, man, Chris? yeah. All right, Chris Fisk. Was there a big demand? so? I actually watched the no. uh, the Hawkeye series. Was and, there a big uh, demand for anything they put I out? forget. Yeah. I guess she was in that, but I don't remember. But I, the no, only yeah, thing I yeah, really remember was the Kingpin bit. And I loved Vincent D'Onofrio. Vincent D'Onofrio, yeah. Yeah, I loved awesome. him in the in the Daredevil show as Kingpin. The only, and my only complaint with the Daredevil show was that he wasn't, they didn't build him the right size, right? He was like regular Vincent D'Onofrio size. But in the Hawkeye mm -hmm. show, if you look closely, they're like, Broadened his shoulders way out and like yeah. gave him a more classic kingpin build. Yeah. That's the only thing that stands out for me in that show, and it's it'll again, never get better than Netflix's first two seasons of Daredevil. Ever, oh no, ever! ever. It yeah. was top. It was perfect. It was just it was rewatchable for mm -hmm. the rest of your life. It was so good. Yeah, dude that that hallway scene is freaking haunting, man. Oh, they're unbelievable. And and here's the thing: yeah. like Charlie Cox isn't a fighter. 
And mm, and it's easier no. to replace Charlie Cox with with a stunt double because he's wearing a mask. Mm. But guess mm-hmm. what? Scarlett Johansson's not a fighter either. They could do it to her. Nice. It's lazy. It's they don't give a shit. It's lazy. It's just editing. Yeah. That's all it is. Right. No, I, actually, I I don't think it's lazy. I think it's the message getting in the way of art and storytelling because it's like, yeah, you're capable. Even though you're a handicap, we're gonna submit you to this excruciating training because you can do it and do like it, it. It's not optimal. I'm sorry. Like it doesn't look that good, dude. Yeah, I remember good. that. Yeah. <laughs> The, the Wayne's oh family. Oh my god, I do remember Damon Wayne's. Holy yeah. shit, dude! Absolute geniuses. Um, we could talk about them all day. All right, so let me let me kick this off, and we'll we'll keep going. But I, I want to see a this. better list here. All right, so here we go, boys. Oh. All right, I' not in love with the bagginess on the suit, but that's all, mm. right. Mm. all right. You okay. know that's the stunt double, obviously. Okay, now yeah. that's that was like the first thing that really jumped out to me when I watched it the first time mm-hmm. was like this. I'm I'm cool with like slides and stuff, and like, yeah, I watched Shang Chi on a whim, and the only good thing to say about Why? that movie was the I fight tried scenes three times. that it ended. Well, that too, <laughs> but the the fact that Jackie Chan's uh, actual fight choreographer was the guy that was the dude that did shang chi's i i can't stand simo lu i think is a huge douche but jackie chan's stunt guy like his fighter choreographer mm-hmm. yeah. um, did a wonderful job so that was fun but the rest of the movie like who gives a shit it's like there's the only thing that is redeemable is like that the fact dude, that i love i love jackie chan he did only his, his son i love right. that dude right on yeah. i was like up in the ccp somehow but anyways yeah Let's, but no, real quick. Faster, I meant. Yeah. Yeah, come on, guys. That, like, he obviously mm-hmm. just tapped her, her calf muscle. Mm-hmm. Or, or her prosthetic. I don't know. Or her prosthetic. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. Her I'm robot leg. Stop. Yeah. So I didn't see any of this. I don't know when to pause, so we'll just keep chatting. Yeah. All right. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean. Sure. I mean, no, Daredevil is. I like yeah. Charlie Cox as the role. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and in the the core, his choreography is fun. Look, like this move is so Daredevil. Like this move going. Yeah, I think he. Charlie can, can you? That suit, though. Yeah. Can can right. you can you like pull it back a bit? Sure. I think Charlie Cox likes there, the there. character too. I think he's a that a that move to, to that to that like piece of furniture there like. That's yeah. Soder Devil right there. Like that, yeah. that's beautiful. That's just him. Yeah, yeah. Even, even how he flipped over the high fence. Mm-hmm. And, like I yeah. love that. Yeah, dude. Let's play it back real quick. Let's milk this puppy. What do you say, boys? Uh, let's do it. Boom. That's beautiful. Boom. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. But so maybe it's just her, really, because this. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing, guy's but... really obviously mm-hmm. able to do his thing. Yeah, but the thing is, like, I I really want to like bash her or anything because. Dude, yeah. like she's missing a leg. Like I, yeah. I can make, I can't make those moves. You know I what don't I mean? know. Hi, like, hire a, a, a hire somebody to re, like do her stunts for her that can actually. Yeah, move. probably that would have been better, right. and replace her face because she she doesn't wear a mask. So maybe this is like no, you have to do it. You're representing yeah. whatever you know, like Latino one-legged chicks from Guatemala. Oh. Like I don't know what they told her. But. What did that yeah, say? A, there's a huge demographic of them watching this. Make yeah, America skate again. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you got. They gotta sneak the little Trump just, not geez. in. They they can mm-hmm. they cannot help themselves. It's yeah. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. I, I gotta say, I that was better than I thought, except for a few of yeah. the close-up scenes where it was actually her yeah. doing the moves. That's yeah. Okay. Like I, that was better than I thought it was gonna be. Honestly. Mm-hmm. Air double was tight here. Yeah. So. Chris says, Shang-Chi was supposedly meant for me as a partial Asian. Can you uh-huh. I should have loved that film. I couldn't finish it. Me either, yeah. Chris. I tried three times to watch it, and I, I can't. <laughs> Same with, I think I tried four times with Eternals, and I can't get through it. I, I oh, no, Eternals is a piece of shit. No, they're they're all, all, I, thought, I thought you were going to say Konnichiwa, bitches. But. Yeah, no, I should have. Yeah. Yeah. Konnichiwa, yeah, exactly. bitches. 
Konnichiwa, bitches. Look like a broke ass sexual chocolate. Chocolate. Wu Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. Yeah, dude, that's awesome. All right. So, oh, Jay Bot. Yeah, the new Dave Chappelle uh, special is out, Ooh. and it's right. fun. It's yeah, fun. I caught a clip of that one. today. We'll pull yeah. that up as well later on. Mm-hmm. I do want to get to arting here soon, but Jay, Jay says, I don't think I don't. In, in that, I think you're right. But the fact is, with with a TV show, they don't have the time. They really no. don't have the. I don't think it was them saying being lazy. They don't have the time or the money to really do as. Which is why I don't like going from a big screen down to TV show. There's a there's a there's a drop in quality and I mm-hmm. it's just yeah. so noticeable sometimes. It's all about time though. That's the thing. Like you don't have the time yeah. to basically. I think that's fair. Yeah, and time you, is money. And if it, you look it's at all, yeah, it's all you just don't have it. If you look at like Hayden Christensen and you and McGregor, like those clips of oh. them training the lightsaber battles, like. Oh, Obviously, dude, they had but, infinite time and money because they're on Daddy Lucas's budget, and yeah. he's going to take dude, that seriously. But dude, but like, but, well, but speaking, over, but speaking on, on on that on that point, Hayden Christensen, it's a freaking national pressure because that guy went from not doing anything because he retired from acting. Mm-hmm. He went to Ahsoka and dude, and his lightsaber fighting was on point, dude. Yeah, that's well, that's the only thing. The only thing good about that Ahsoka show was that like last lesson to Ahsoka from from Anakin it was like, right. dude, that was very cool. Yeah, I, I, watch, I'll have to watch that scene. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's I, I haven't I haven't seen Ahsoka. Like I tried watching the first tried, episode. And like, I tried like, too. Oh. Yeah, yeah, but but that Anakin sequence is just like, dude, like hmm. the things like he fought like a more mature Anakin Skywalker. That's you know right. what I mean? Like, if he never turned to to Vader, like, yeah. his poise, like, he's doing these little things that he's, like, loving with the soccer, and he does something with the shoulder that, that pushes her back. Like, dude, it was just freaking amazing. Oh, I, like, I, I, that's cool. I, yeah. I, I didn't that awesome. see that, but I did mm-hmm. see the scene, and I did it begrudgingly. My best friend basically put yeah. it in front of me and was like, here, watch this. And I was like, yeah. All right. But it's the scene of the end of the series with uh, Vader versus Obi Wan, and on principle, oh. I wanted to hate it just because it's like no, no, no. We've already had mm-hmm. this epic showdown, right? I, yeah. I'm I'm about maintaining the lore. You know, let me fix my glasses. Yeah. But it's like mm-hmm. as as far as what they offered, like I would have not greenlit the show were it up to me. But as far as that particular mm-hmm. fight scene, I mean, it actually was pretty good, and was there was a lot good. of. There was a lot of emotion between the two of them, and you could tell, like, sort of to my original point, it's like, I think most actors, especially with cool roles like Daredevil, maybe this chick really wants to do a good job as Echo, but maybe they just oh, really didn't have the time, right? No, the, the thing is, like, I, I, I don't really blame actors, is I blame the scripts. The scripts are dog shit. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, they have nothing to work with. That, well, that's and funny. If it, this, this, this actress could be, like, a great actress and, uh, like, a very sweet lady. Mm-hmm. But within within Hawkeye, like I was asking I myself, her. when is she dying? When I is she gonna die? Like, go. I want her out of here. But get real her quick, out of here. to the chat, because I, I, I do want to get to drawing and arting here. Yeah. I mean, good lord, twenty minutes yeah. in. But no, um, mm-hmm. it's all good talk here. So the Texas tornado wrestled for years, missing a right foot. Nobody knew How about that. Jaybot says mm-hmm. she does martial arts, so she should be able to keep up. Yeah. Maybe they just didn't have the time. Does she really do martial yeah. arts? So I don't, I don't know. That's kind of like, like saying, Ibo, Billy, yeah, Billy I Blanks. don't know because you can't Billy really Blanks. believe anything they say because everyone who directs a movie is like, "Oh, I was a really big fan growing up of the Green Lantern," and no, yeah, you weren't. You, you're a fucking right. liar, and you're supposed. I know yeah. you're supposed to lie, but stop. Like mm, I don't believe right. anything they say. I know, and she yeah. doesn't. She definitely doesn't move like a martial. Like, okay. There's certain there's a lot of females that kind of don't hold their body properly when when they're mm-hmm. fighting. Like they'll, they'll they'll keep their their hands like really close up here or something. The karate yeah. awkward, okay? She was doing yeah. that. She was doing mm-hmm. that. So obviously she's not used to pan placement. Like I could tell. I mean, she does she doesn't do martial arts. There's no fucking way. This is bad news here, boys. It's mm-hmm. so sad that She Hulk is getting another season. Didn't Dude. watch that whatsoever. Walk and, away. Uh, Just dude, walk I'm away, guys. Interested. Walk away. I'm, I'm, I'm Make I'm better interested. stuff. I'm such All a right, huge Hulk fan. I refuse to watch that. So real real quick, I just want to, because since I made yeah. the joke, I, I want to sort of get 
soak in some of that after effect. Chris, <laughs> Chris says, lol, I'm more of a Gangnam style Asian than a Kanichiwa bitches kind of Asian. Fair enough. Right. And then say, oh, I guess. We love Chris all Asians. Asians. Absolutely. Yeah, all Asians. I love Korean food. Kidding me? Her martial arts name was Wimp Low. Yes. Wimp Low. Oh, that that nice. Interesting. Okay, so Wimp. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch screens here. Pedro, you got something to pull up, buddy? You said you wanted to. Um, well, uh, yeah. Put you on the spot. Okay. Yeah, they, you're doing that today. I don't know why. Jesus, leave me alone, James. It'll never be the same again. Mm-hmm. All right. So yeah, I'm doing a little cleanup some for some promo art for what was in Kaiju. So I'm gonna be nice. working in that. Doing the angels. All right. So what's up, guys? Well, I'm doing so I've been working out of two books and uh don't have any books. It's, working out of two books uh one of the reasons i picked up the frank miller daredevil is because it's mm -hmm. frank miller daredevil and i've heard that that's just if you're gonna get into comics or learn something you know what i mean I've just heard very high things about this run but so mm -hmm. there's that one reason but the other reason is it's inked mostly by klaus jansen who oh, is wow. uh yeah out, out of the two books that i've been learning how to draw uh draw from it's how to draw comics the marvel way that's by John Buscema, right? The other book yeah. is the DC is. Comics Guide to Penciling, and that's by mm. Klaus Jansen. So that's where I that's where I basically steal all of my anatomy is from that, mm. and then like the figures and stuff I get out of the Marvel book. But uh, so yeah, this is my Daredevil sort of John Buscema pose with a little bit of Klaus Jansen, like just trying to mimic. Uh, it's hard to see. This is my first time using this setup like this. Yeah. No, I can. No, you, you can see it. You, it's it's readable. I can see all the lines and yeah. stuff. Even even yeah. when it was pulled back more, I could see everything. Cool. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, it's, it's on. It's on watercolor paper, so I just was. Feeling... I can't switch my screen, so it's just gonna be my face. But I'll show you guys what I'm doing. Um, actually, since we're on your show, Ginge, I'm going to be mm -hmm. uh, doing another layer on the first page of the well. All right. Beautiful. Yeah. I got because I, I had that, that layer done with, with the sketch that you okayed. So I'm mm -hmm. just going to start. And that's what I do. I just because I work digitally. So I just, you know, do a few layers and build up and then throw the, throw some inks on. Absolutely. Stoked for that. Got two yeah. two of my artists in here. I'm, it's a gingy sandwich. It's a, <laughs> it's a ging sandwich. Who wants a bite? Uh, dude, the script was so good. It was, I Thank told my you, wife, buddy. I was like, you got it because she likes Stephen King. And I'm like, oh, it's, nice. it's so good. You got it. She's got to read it. Yeah, it's definitely Joe Hill inspired. Like, um, there's like a sort of, I'd say the main two inspirations is like Final Destination and uh, The Black Phone, um, which was a movie that mm. came out recently. But yeah, also, I remember The Black Phone. Yeah. 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 I read the short story too. It's, yeah, really good. They're both like political sissies, you know, but if you, if you still enjoy their content, I mean, yeah, but no, thank you. Yeah, dude. Like, right now, I don't pay to. I don't pay attention to people's politics. Like, if they're doing yeah. good, good stuff, cool. Heard that. I'm the see. I'm I'm the same way, buddy. It's just that they don't subscribe to the same rule, so I end up oh, no. politics, and it's like fuck. Just, yeah. You know. Yeah. I, I tend to ignore that that shit. It, maybe maybe it's because I'm not American, so. The Trump derange derangement syndrome to me is like kind of funny. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, I, yeah, but, I, I get it. But but yeah, like they, when they start like mouthing out, like I just tune out, go somewhere else. Lately, I've been listening to a lot of like uh, like sci-fi stories. Like, there's a lot mm -hmm. of channels that do like sci-fi stories on on YouTube. It's just like written. They they have like an AI voice. Oh, nice! Like creepy yeah. pasta type stuff, but no, not really. It's more like like humanity going into into like the galactic community and being the assholes of of, of the galaxy. Really cool. <laughs> nice. Right. 
Let's go, humanity. Yeah, Let's go, baby. Yeah, like we didn't know humans fought like that. Like the older stories are like that. It's really cool. Cool. Yeah. No, I can dig it. The sort of what's the word I'm looking for? The uh resilience of humanity. Let's call it. No, more they're more like the barbarians of the galaxy. No, I was trying to be polite about it. But, yeah. Yeah. Trying to give humanity the benefit of the doubt here but oh don't do no, that. Cause that, that, no but don't. that's funny though because i was talking about this with a buddy of mine the other day that's think oh about i don't to know think. well it's like i don't know as far as humanity goes like i'm not interested in that and i'm not really interested in other people doing it on a on a mass scale but it does make me wonder like sort of what is the i mean i guess i've smoked a bit of pot here this is what happens when you smoke yeah. weed i'm over here um, wondering about the fate um, of humanity on a oh larger no. scale guys <laughs> oh, never mind no. here we go again oh, no bro no never mind <laughs> sweet you can baby talk. jesus <laughs> no i'm but, wrong I'm, man well i'm just saying it's like i don't i don't really see any I mean, aside from us just trying to do better, it is seemingly going to be a cycle of uh, a, one majority of people that just kind of want to. I think somebody said this on Twitter the other day, or it was a quote or something. But it's like there's a majority of people. It's like the people that want to be left alone versus the si the section of people that don't want to leave people alone. Yeah, and maybe that's yeah. way oversimplified, but you get what I'm saying. But it's that it's the whole thing about collect collectivism and individualism. Like an individualist will never mess up with, with your day. It's only people who want to tell you what, what to do. Like the planet is dying. Really? No. Yeah. How do you know? Yeah. So that's, that's the thing. Like now they're saying like meat, uh like we we start we gotta start like eating bugs and that there's too many humans breathing, like they, they don't know what to do. Like I saw this article on, on the New York Post. Like there's way too many uh, humans breathing at the same time, mm -hmm. and yeah, I just wrote to the writer like, "Yeah, you stop first. But that's the mm -hmm. thing. Like the, it's the New York Post. Like it's the media. It's all these things. Are, all these studies. All these things. They're done by psychotic, demon worshiping sociopaths. Yeah. Why would Most anyone sociopath. read them or take them seriously? Ah, oh, dude. Yeah. The the things like they're they're Malthusian. And there, and I don't know if you're you're familiar with Malthus. Uh, I, like I, a, I know I have heard obviously uh, the name or the term, but I don't know the specifics of that. I've heard of Methuselah. Oh, so, no, Methuselah. It's it's the the guy who lived for six hundred years. Uh, yeah. A Malthusian concept, like he was talking about how war was needed to call humanity because we have finite resources. Yeah, but that was that was like overturned because technology allows us to basically do more with less mm -hmm. right. so now in one when one acre of land you can uh basically prepare the land to to do super cropping so you can feed an entire town with what you needed like 12 acres to feed people you can do with with one one acre which is not with the technology we have today so the malthusian uh theorem basically left technology out of the equation so malthus is an idiot but these guys are taking cues from malthusianism and they I think, the, the, think we're on a real a real world so i'm mm -hmm. kind of out of the entire conversation i don't i i, <laughs> yeah. I honestly do think we're, we're in like a matrix i i do think we're yeah. in a real reality i mean if we go to the, the whole like theories of vibrational reality and, and what reality really is, maybe we're in a simulation. But yeah, that's just way too much YouTube. No, I mean, there's, I mean, when you've got people openly talking about depopulation and when the rich elites, I mean, like Bill Gates has been on this shit openly for like 20 years. Yeah. So, I mean, you do sound crazy, but the what's what makes it what makes it sort of like oh shit is like when you're like oh yeah then other some of these people do believe some shit. Dude, have and you that seen that, that? Have you seen that Carl Schwab guy? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the We're guy from the World Economic down. Forum. Yeah, yeah. Dude, that guy's like a dollar store Von villain. Like, yeah. 
he's not even like like faking it like he's a Bond villain. Like, yeah, we mm-hmm. should get rid of the. There's too many people are in too many cows. The cows are farting and destroying the ozone layer. Like, uh, yeah. shut up, Goldfinger. No, that's. I mean, and that kind of leads to my belief, where I, I I don't even think he's a real person. Like, I'm actually. Okay. So, have you guys have you guys heard of like the NPC theory? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. I fi- I figured you guys have. So, I, I I really believe that, and I don't know if reality itself is running a script. Mm. I I, okay. I don't know how it works. But I do think, like, I do think these people are characters. And I think mm. that our, I, cause, okay, I do believe in souls. I do believe in spirits. I don't believe everyone has a connection to something higher, which would be the NPCs mm. would be disconnected from anything higher. Mm. And I don't, I don't believe that this matrix is it. But, like, I kind of, one thing that I kind of lean towards is this, like, a spiritual training ground. And these characters are here to keep this illusion going mm. for, for, for people to kind of make decisions with how they want to proceed after this. You so know, this like, is a, you, like a like a like a gym for the soul, basically. Kind of like a gym for the soul, and that we uh-huh. volunteered to come here. Now I don't know why I would ever do that because I freaking hate it. But mm. I mean I, hate so, I, I, know, I, I like the gym. It's I not hate that bad, gym. dude. I, I, I hate that bad news. I, I couldn't pass that joke up now. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I really, and that's just one thing I lean towards. I don't really believe wholeheartedly in anything because I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like that's the thing. Like I'm, I'm not an atheist because that's very, like, I don't know, like, very pretentious to say. Like I know there's nothing out, out there. Like I don't. There's know. more. There's more than this. I just don't know what it yeah. is. Yeah. Exactly. That that's the an agnostic approach to basically I don't know spiritualism. And I think being a little bit agnostic is healthy because it's humbling. Like you're accepting that you don't know. Some people have faith in God. Hey, God bless you. If you have like faith enough to say, like, you know, I know for sure that there's a Jesus. Like I would say, like, it would be really nice if there's a Jesus and like the whole yeah. thing, the whole religion, it would be really nice. Like I'm have nothing against that. But I can't really say I know for certain that it is. You know what I mean? And I'm not bashing no, anyone's no. face. And, and that's the thing, like, you really, that's the weird thing. Like, you can't, using the, the, the exact definition of words, you can't mm-hmm. know because you've never seen. So yeah, you exactly. can strongly believe, but you really mm-hmm. can't know. And it's like, it's, yeah. Exactly. yeah. That's faith. You know, and, and that's beautiful. Is, but there's nothing wrong. You, you don't have to know. You can just say, I believe. That's good enough. Yeah, exactly. yeah. I I can't get myself to do that. I guess there's a flaw in me, yes. But I just can't do can't it. get yourself to do what? We heard that, everybody. Pedro's a deeply flawed man. He's revealing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, no, like, I, I can get myself to say, like, I, I run only on faith. Like, um, mm. I tried. I can't do it. No, and yeah. I don't think. I think that'd be ill-advised in this world, to be honest. Yeah. I think we're in a world... Okay, so even in the Bible, there it, it states... I know God... Okay, and I'm not Christian, but I know a little bit. God created the world, right. But in the Bible, mm-hmm. it actually says Satan right now has dominion over this world. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I would not take anything on faith if it's a world full of lies. And I believe it is a world full of lies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not, like, I grew up in a sort of, I'd say, for, like, maybe the first, I don't know. I I grew up in church to some degree, but only on the weekends, if you spent the night with Granny, it's like the rules, you got to go to church. But I spent a lot of time over there. Yeah, most of us did that, probably. Right. But I just, it it never clicked with me. But as I've gotten older, um, I've definitely went from being a sort of definite atheist to like uh being a christian apologist and now i'm like sort of leaning i'm pretty sure there's a god and uh if i had to pick one i would definitely pick jesus Um, but yeah there's like certain like so today i don't know i i just i struggle sort of going back and forth on it but i i like the jordan peterson angle of maybe pretending you know acting as if there is one i think 
I think that's an interesting way to do it. But I don't know. There's like certain elements of uh, of the Bible and you know things like that that I'm like, man, that's really really out there. Like, uh, so I was listening. I was listening to something about the Taiping Rebellion today. You guys ever looked into that? The no. Taiping Rebellion in China. That's yeah. uh, during the the fall of the last emperor, right? Um, I think that was the Boxer Rebellion. I think this was a bit, um, a couple hundred years before that, but I'm not too specific. Um, but cause there was yeah. like, there was still an emperor at the time, but it was like a rebellion emperor and like the whole story. But basically the guy that, the guy that took over China briefly, um, was this dude who claimed to be, um, Jesus's younger brother, basically. Mm. And uh, like just rallied a group of uh, people over the course of like a decade and, and a half or something like that. And like um, I haven't got to the end of the story yet, but um, where I'm at, he's like he had five um, Dude, you, sort of. You start to tell a story you haven't finished yet. Well, the point yeah, being, right. well, no, the, the point being is it's like when they were they used they used Christianity, a version of it, like mm -hmm. this weirdo sort of like militant chinese like from like the 15th century or something like that 1500 mm -hmm. like very different i guess but there was elements of it like they they changed parts of the book because some of the stuff was out there like even for a band of marauding lunatics like the story of mm -hmm. lot which is what i was like yeah that is kind of out there today yeah. it's like i don't, I don't <clears throat> and maybe i'm just an idiot that hasn't looked into it but like I, and I'm I'm sure it's not promoting the Bible's probably not promoting that it's a good thing that Lot's daughters got him drunk and they had sex, you know, mm. um, sort of like repopulate the world because I think they thought everybody got destroyed after Sodom or something like that. I'm probably getting some of that mixed up, but I don't know. Yeah. It does. I I, I, I I hear things like that and I'm like, eh, I don't know, man. This shit's kind of weird. Yeah. That, that would be me out. In, if that's the story, I think you're justified in, in thinking that, Ging. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you just wounded me out a bit. So. Yeah, it's like, but do you let that not, uh, do you let that dissuade you from, you know, following the religion? A lot of people don't. I don't think it gets brought up a lot in church, to be fair. But uh, Probably not. Yeah. Well, so let's check the chat here, boys. We got Chris Fisk. He says, yeah, this is an evil world. If you thrive here, you're playing into the devil's hands. This is why all mm. these Hollywood weirdos are into sick, demonic shit. Yeah, there is a lot of that, too. It's kind of hard to say that they're at least not trying to openly play into it, right? With, like, lots of weirdo satanic imagery with Rihanna. I forget what the story was, but she's been on that shit lately. There was that, that dude who, uh, Little Nas X, who made... Oh, I mean, he, dude, had that, he had that video, right? But then he made those weirdo Satan shoes where it was like made like human blood supposedly was inside the base of the shoe and there was only 666. But like they lean into it. And, and if that's to shock people for sales, I guess. But I don't know. It seems dude. it seems pretty wrong to openly sort of want to worship the devil. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think it's, uh, that's their religion. I don't think it's to shock anything. I think it's to normalize it. Yeah. Okay, so... If you look at the amount of satanic shit in on on all the music awards, on any of the football, the, the football halftime things, right. the the um the Olympic uh shows, it, it ima imagine what you see now compared to what you would have seen in like maybe 1982 mm -hmm. and how yeah, fucking dude. normal it is to see dude. any of the Teen girls half naked with devil horns sticking their tongue out and rubbing themselves. Right. That's just the way it is now. That's entertainment. Like I don't know, man. I, I grew up. I grew up listening to Slayer. Yeah. Exodus and like Crash and death metal. So mm -hmm. I don't but know. Slayer, like, but Slayer is tame compared to what yeah. Rihanna actually does. Yeah. Like, that's the crazy part, dude. Mm -hmm. And this like Slayer, okay, I was 15 when I started listening like to like heavy trash and all that stuff. But it was, I didn't feel like it was aimed at me. You know what I mean? Yeah. The the thing with pop is that thing like it's aimed at kids, and that's a little yes. bit disturbing. Like yes, yeah, it's a slow drip. Like these people are so. That's why it's called the plan of ages. These people are generationally patient. They don't need it all right now. 
they know how to work the human mind. And mm. it's just that slow drip and you make it normal. Yeah, there is seeming to be a lot of, you know, just, I mean, well, so have you guys heard about, uh, again, I guess we're we're fully in the, the rabbit hole today, but have you guys heard about this latest Etsy thing with uh, these AI generated images of kids holding pizza and chicken wings and these no. images no. going for instant delivery for like three, four, ten grand. Somebody made a compilation of it. And uh, we all sort of know what that's in reference to. Um, it's but no yeah, different that, than the Wayfair. It's it's just well, the next Wayfair incident that. That's what I was getting thing. to. Yeah. Like, yeah. do we? What do we think about that? Because that I saw I saw the picture that had the safes, and then it connected the names with missing children posters. And I always take yeah. you got to take something like that with like, well, hold on now, let's let's not go rushing to believing this right away. But at the same time, you know. I can do that. And then also sort of when it, it that my first reaction is to be shocked. And then my second reaction is to be like, okay, hold on. Let's, let's think about this for a second, but just taking it on its face. I mean, th that's thoroughly insane. You know, it like, is here's, here's, here would be my take. And again, I didn't do it. So I don't know. I'm just guessing. But right. the last time this came around was during the 2020 election. I think a lot of what they do now, could it be real? Yes, it could be because child trafficking is a real thing. But I think what they also do is they put stories out there for truthers to latch on to. Yeah. And this could be one of those stories, knowing that people are watching. And it gives something to talk about while other shady shit's going on. So yeah. it, it could be real or it could be something just mm. to... Because it's not like it hasn't been done before. It's just Wayfair. And people yeah. have a short-term memory, and they're like, "Oh, I'm, this child trafficking is, is gotten out of hand." It's always been out of hand. What are you talking right. about? Yeah, there's never a point in time when it's in hand. It's like there's if it's happening, numbers it's of out of hand. Jesus, it's like, never being controlled. Like, wow. guys, we can only yeah. do hundred this yeah. year. Anything more is out of hand. We're really yeah. in the red on this child trafficking, guys. What is right. going on? Come yeah, on. The mayor's right. gonna have my ass. <laughs> 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 Oh God! Fucking horrible. It says here, yeah, it's sad seeing the videos of little black toddlers singing to WAP on Twitter. That's another thing too. Yeah, oh, like yeah. Uh, yeah, the full, um, yeah, the full sex sexualization. I used to be a bouncer for a sh not well, not for a strip club. I was a DJ for a strip club. I used to be a bouncer for a nightclub, and uh, dude, there was like times where just like very trashy moms would like just because my my town's a spring break party town right so i mean you would just have like moms yeah just allowing twerking alongside their daughters who are underage like it's uh Ew. it's That's not disgusting. A, yeah it's not disgusting. A, the culture ain't looking too hot my man it's, i'll just say that Yeah, this has been a very uplifting show. Yeah, well, <laughs> let's, let's not leave any dead air on that. I hope, it's not, I hope it's not my fault because help, I help, help no, 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 it's all right. I don't. No, I, we're, I can, we're starting things any for strong. I, think. I can go conspiracy really quick. I don't want yeah. to do that if, if it's gonna make it. No, 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 it's all right. It's all right. I love it. Do you guys want to hear the craziest story I have of when I worked at that uh, nightclub? Though yes. I'm not sure. It involves. Uh, well, Pedro, if I tell you what it involves, you'll say no. It involves way But it is funny. It is one of the funniest moments of my life, you know, okay. from afar. Well, you've got to tell us now. So I was a uh, bouncer. Really, I mean, the, the official, and I'm not, don't get me wrong, I'm not a particularly large guy, but it was a large team. So you just sort of do things by numbers. But um, I was an ID checker at the front, you know, letting people in and out, blah, blah, blah. And uh, so at the end, so I live in Panama City and during the month of spring break, which I think is March, um, it used to run till four. And then some chick got gang banged um, out on the beach. And uh, so mm. then the town kind of got in some trouble for that and then uh, dialed it back down to, to 2 a.m. is when the bars started to close, like during that month. So uh, and fair enough. All right, fine. I guess we can't be gang banging out on the on the beach. 
I mean, it was became yeah, yeah, it made fun. its way to that, Fox News. That shit. That's frowned upon. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, so it's we're closing up one night. It's probably about one o'clock, one thirty, and uh, I'm I go into the main office to do something. I come back out to the door, which is where we called the entryway. Right, it's like this big open air patio thing. It's a big club, and um, to the I basically I see it like a group of like four or five of my coworkers just standing in a circle, staring at the side of the building. Oh, and then God. I walk up, I'm like, what's going on guys. And then I turn and see, and mind you, the club's closing or, or getting ready to close. So we've got a small drizzle of people coming out of this area and we're, and we're all converging in the same spot. Right. So we've got a group of customers building up and then we've got a group of employees slowly building up. And uh, what's going on is there's these two Indian dudes making out on the wall, like alongside of the wall of the club. And uh, it was like, I don't know how to describe it really, other than it was like getting ready to see a train wreck. Um, Because, dude, it was just like, I mean, I I really have to go into detail here. But like they were quite obviously very fucked up. And uh, it ended up with this uh, Indian dude pulling out his buddy's dong right there in front of everybody. And they, he unbuttoned his shirt, went down on him, was like kissing on him. And, and all the while, more and more people are leaving the club. And it's just this crowd of people are building up around this moment. And nobody says a word, right? It's just you could hear a pin drop, right? And, uh, of course, when the moment he pulls this dude's dong out, it the whole crowd goes, ah! Everybody starts laughing. And then uh, our bosses come storming down and was like, why the hell didn't you stop and do that? And we're like, just nobody said anything. It was like, I mean, I, I don't know. It was hilarious. You had to be there. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I had to be there because I, I, I don't find that funny, man. I, I mean, it, it was pretty funny, yeah. but I can yeah. see why it's not funny. I, I, I'm just wondering why a bunch of dudes were watching that. That's strange. Yeah, exactly. I was like. Yeah. Well, it wasn't necessarily a bunch of dudes. It was like, sure, me and my coworkers, but it was more like I'm I'm not going over there to stop that, I guess. But there was also like a crowd of like by the end of it, there's probably a crowd of like 250 people. Oh my like, god. It, I mean, yeah. I'm not saying I'd go over there to stop it, like, hey guys, take it somewhere else, but I I I would definitely not be like I wouldn't be I don't I don't know. I wouldn't have Dude, a cell I mean, phone out, I, I guess. I spared you guys a lot of the 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 gist the of details. it, right? I but I mean, it, it, it was. I mean, it was something like this. I mean, he, I mean, he unbuttoned this dude's shirt, kissed him from the neck down to the belly button, back up. Like it was this whole thing, and the mm. crowd just kept building. And and, and there was like, I mean, it's and the crazy. moment it happened, bro, you couldn't believe your eyes. Like you're like, no, no, no. And then he does it, and everybody, ah. Oh, people are laughing. Know. It was hysterical. Yeah, I don't know, man. Like they, they couldn't pay me enough to touch Indian Bean. Like, well, no, no, I, I wouldn't have those guys. Nobody yeah. said anything about that. Pops has got it. Yeah, right. no, but it's like, stuck to it. You couldn't look away. It really, it was yeah. hard to. I mean, you, you would. It's hearing the story, to. hearing the story, you're like, no, Ginge, not hard yeah. at all. It's the easiest thing yeah. I could have done all day. It's like, and I, I understand that, but I'm just saying, like, when you, as I did, just come out of nowhere right i'm just walking into the situation and i turn mm-hmm. and i see that i'm like what the fuck well, and then Jim, you just what, what, what you, would it happen if your boss told you like all right Jim, break that well off. no they i i just i mean the only thing i've been able to think of for years was i'm not getting dick breath on me like that's all yeah, I exactly. say. Mm-hmm. yeah i'm not i'm not touching that pee pee uh-uh. and and i can Hell no. yeah i mean unless they were gay i can only imagine that was truly the most awkward next day because that was just literally in oh, front if, of everybody. If they were not gay, like yeah, that, that would be an awkward conversation. Yeah. Dude, I don't feel Ooh. bad talking about Wayfair anymore now. Yeah, right, exactly. As well, hey. <laughs> I mean, I've seen some crazy shit out here. It's Florida, man. Like, so some of the stories mm-hmm. are true, I guess. I don't know. Pedro, Lord, you guys man. don't have anything out. I live in Panama City. Pedro lives in Panama. Mm-hmm. Of some yeah. hours from Panama City. Pedro, have you ever seen anything? What's the craziest shit you no dudes blowing each other? For a no, no of, dudes blowing each other. But, well, I once saw a dolphin kick the shit out of a guy. 
<laughs> that's funny. Does, does, does that count? Okay, no, that's actually funny. I didn't expect yeah. that at all. Okay. Yeah, dude, this is like the, the, this, the shit this, out of a guy. Yeah, there's this three Colombian tourists, and they're like drinking in the beach, which is fine, you know. That's what you do on the beach, but they're obviously drunk, and they're 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 like on um, waist high water, you know, with their cans and whatnot. And a dolphin <laughs> comes to say hi. Mm -hmm. Is that's what they do in, in this beach, right? And one of the idiots, uh, like, hugged the dolphin and poured some beer down his blowhole. Oh, mother! Wow! And, and the dolphin didn't appreciate it, so the dolphin went back and came swimming full speed and broke his leg. <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? I don't yeah, know. Feel bad for the guy, though. <laughs> dude, awesome. Yeah, dude. The, the the lifeguards had a hard time getting him out of the water. Because it's really hard to rescue somebody while you're laughing, so <laughs> it was, dude. Yeah. It was very, it was very cool. That's a that's cool really thing. cool. Yeah, yeah. That is cool. Definitely better than two Indian dudes blowing each other. Yeah, exactly. Like, technically yeah. one, but we can only assume what happened when they got home. But you know, anyway. And also, once when I was in Colombia, I I saw this. Well, I, I didn't see it. I saw like the aftermath of it. Uh -huh. But I, I don't know what really happened, but, like, you know what sicarios are? Yeah, assassins, right? Yeah. Hitman so, or whatever. Yeah, yeah hitman. So there's two hitmen. Like, they, they usually do their, their hits in bikes, right? Right. Yeah. So I guess they do a hit, but there was, like, a, the police neighbor nearby, mm. and there was a shootout. And I'm, I'm coming, coming from class. It already happened. But what I see is a bike like hogging uh, a lamppost. The lamppost is on the floor and right next to the light bulb of the lamppost, there's a pool of blood. Jesus. Wow. And we, everybody, like, it became like CSI, like, but what? Did the lamppost fall on top of the head of somebody or was, was that there? Like, I don't know, man. It was very weird. Wow. And and they're like uh, a police that uh, one of the policemen that was there, like, no, 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 like, we shot the guy, he fall there, and the lampos happened to fall under on the, on the, on the right uh, spot where he was shot. But no, the lampos didn't fall in, but but dude, it was it was like a good two hours of people speculating what happened. The police whacked him with a, a lamppost, yeah, dude. Like, I don't know, man. Like, I mean, living in Colombia was very weird because I was always like witnessing like really violent stuff no doubt but i had a lot of fun there it was weird colombian bitches or no yeah i mean i had a girlfriend when i was there but yeah, well, yeah the, bring the, some sand to the beach why don't you yeah I'm the, just kidding. The, <laughs> the shadow the shadow of bitches was always there no, i'm just playing and i'm thinking you. like I'm, I'm talking about good quality colombian no, I mean, you, women yeah, you don't want to get hooked up with like a super good looking Colombian because I'm sure one of her family members is a dude you don't want to piss off, right? Uh, that's a myth. I mean, I, I had, I had like, okay, I, I lived there for four years and I had two girlfriends right there and their families were normal. Like yeah. they were not like, like rock runners or whatever. They're just normal families that live in a very violent country. It's like assuming every Italian is related to the mafia. Yeah, it's it's right to the mafia. But I mean if you want to play it safe, you assume that, I right? Yeah, so I, I that's do. the thing. Just, right? like, I, I don't I don't blame people for thinking that about Colombia. It's, I mean, if you're bombard bombarded by news like today in Colombia, death and destruction and yeah, it was partially true because I was there in ninety three when, when Pablo Escobar was still alive. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there were bombs and there were uh, people like they. You, you know what what the Medellin necktie is? It's less similar to like the Colombian necktie, or no? Well, they like yeah. cut your th yeah yeah they pull your tongue out through the, your throat, or my or they cut the yeah, stomach yeah. or something. Yeah. No, no, they they cut your throat and they pull your tongue out of your throat. Uh, so yeah, like you'll see that. Uh, they came out with, with a really interesting device called a PVC neck bomb. 
Yeah, so they will they will they will grab like a cell phone and we'll put it on a PVC full of explosives around the engine. So if they call that the bomb will explode. So wow. Yeah, yeah. They, they they will they will send that to like your family. Like if you give us two if you don't give us two million pesos, your cousin is gonna die. Two million pesos is like it was like a hundred dollars. It's just wow. And it was very surreal. Jesus. Yeah, that's, well, that's a bummer that's for sure. Crazy. Yeah. But still, visit Colombia, guys. It's it's nah. a lot of fun. I don't know, buddy. I, I I'd be I'd love to even come to Panama, but I'd I, yeah. How much if if shit hit the fan? How much protection could you actually offer me, or would you have to be like, we got to get you the fuck out of here, Ginge? Oh, Ginge, I live in the mountains. I mean, for uh -huh. for trouble to get to you here, like the trouble has to come walk on, bro. a lot. They get yeah, to try to Pan drag the gringo out in the streets and make an example out of him. Not really. Dude, yeah, the, the thing like the is, is sort of cartel war. Yeah, dude. <laughs> you know, you know, like the, the gringo guy who who shot Panamanian, who shot two Panamanians on the, the, on the last that, that lawyer guy from a couple yeah. months ago. Mm -hmm. Right now, Panamanians are afraid of, afraid of gringos because I went with my dad to the fish market, and it was full of gringos. Because I mean, it, it's a town called Rio Alto. It's a really nice fish market, but all like the expat towns. We have expat towns now. Uh, live close to this place mm -hmm. so the market is full of gringos and me and my dad are laughing our balls like are we gonna get shot <laughs> but yeah, so okay. no no man Panama is it's really really safe like unless you go to if, unless you come looking for crawl you know like if you go to bad neighbors like everybody's gonna yeah. tell like hey don't go there no doubt like for example if I go to Baltimore like right. what what, no, what no, do no, I have no. to do in Baltimore like you Shit. know yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Fuck that. I mean, no, those are places I also wouldn't go to. Chicago or. I mean, yeah. It's all. It's all spots I'd like to go in my head. I'd love to visit New York City, and I'm sure mm -hmm. I'd be all right. But a couple weeks ago, or maybe months ago, now there was a a guy riding around on a moped, sh shooting people in the head, just mm. as, as many as he could. He got. I think he he got shot himself. But. Well, no. Um, the the last yeah. time I went to New York was in 2000. 13 and i had a blast i have a lot of friends artists uh, that live in new york painters uh -huh. yeah hippies you know they 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 went to college with me so right like wherever i go it's very bohemian it's a lot of weed no doubt yeah so yeah well i mean yeah. better than kicking it old school i guess you know yeah I, i'm There's in no that way. camp now too it's like i, mm -hmm. I used to uh be in rough areas right mm. and i look back at my time and i'm like man it's really lucky i didn't get shot because i you yeah. know i was also a young man with a, a loud mouth you were and, a young squire yeah and uh you know just a, a dumbass really mm. and uh yeah now now i'm sort of subscribed to it's like well if you don't go out nothing stupid happens to you yeah, yeah i like that or if you don't go to stupid places the thing is like if you if you go out but you don't act stupid, like it's really hard for you to, to get in trouble because I don't know man. Like, when I had the school, they, they take me to this place called Torillo, which is a really rough part of town. Because uh we were working with that foundation, I was like, ah, like teach teach the kids how to draw, come on. So so I go. Right. And then like the, the kid who drew the best is like, yeah, we have a game here. Like what what's that? Like circle the bullet hole. It's like what? Yeah. So they will they will go to walls with their bullet holes and they'll like draw a circle with a marker. And whoever like finds more bullet holes wins. And that's the game the game kids play in that in that like town. Like, oh, okay. Riveting. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. no, no, I mean it's a horror. That sounds like a, a horrible environment to grow up in. No yeah, and dude, those poor kids, like they were like eleven, Absolutely. but they they spoke like adults. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they they seen some shit. Yeah, that's just like a... I take my hat off to them. Real quick to the chat here, we've got. Yeah. Um, let's see, treat her nice. She'll be fine. I assume Shadow's talking about. Um, the Colombian women. 
Yeah. No doubt. Chris Fist says, no worries, Ginge. Our lack of southern border is <laughs> importing that shit up here. Soon you'll be able to experience it all mm. firsthand. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know. I mean, m one of my good friends lives in Mexico. Or not in Mexico. He lives in Texas. Um, I don't think too far from uh. the border. And he is Mexican. Um, his parents um, crossed over illegally like 20 plus mm. years ago. And uh, I mean, he's a great dude. Like, used to be a far left guy years ago, and I turned him into a Trump supporter. And now he's like mm. still very much on that culture war. Like, we still talk a lot. He's a good friend of mine. But um, even Texas, though, like, he, he wants me to. We were talking about going to Austin in October this year. Mm. Yeah. And it's like, Mm, I don't but, know, man. With 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 the it, way people it, are coming over, it's like, mm. yeah. Isn't Austin like very like liberal though? Yeah, but like, I mean, there's a lot. Yeah, it's definitely that. But we're interested in mm. going to Joe Rogan's club and mm. just sort of okay. hanging out and seeing the town. And yeah, I mean, it's supposed to be a lot of fun. Like, yeah, don't know. don't get me wrong. It's like as I've as I've gotten older, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a liberal dude necessarily, but I, I'm mm -hmm. also, I mean, I don't know. I'm complex. I'm, like an hour ago, I was talking about how I would never leave my house if I didn't have to. But at the same time, yeah, I like going out and doing things. I'm a, I'm a human being, but yeah. Yeah, I've smoked too much pot this episode, boys. I'm, I'm back <laughs> yeah, on again. You have. You have. <laughs> but it's fun. Yeah. All right. No, all right, guys. Which, so we are I, coming. I, I ran out of, out of edibles. I have to get some edibles. No doubt. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I I'm brownies, looking to yeah. experiment with that. I've mm. I've only dabbled okay. to various okay. degrees. Be take an afternoon for it. Take an afternoon for it. Mm -hmm. And don't think it's not gonna hit you. Because a lot of people oh, are yeah. like, yeah, it's been an hour. I don't feel anything. Let me have some more, and then you'll die. So give it a yeah, good hour. Yeah, I've heard the same thing about edibles. It don't yeah. do what you think you should, and just give it time. Yeah, don't underestimate it, because, dude. It's it's not a, a smoke high. It's it's an it's edible different. high. It's different. Yeah, yeah, I've never done it, but I know people, and they say the exact same thing. Yeah, dude. It's, I would and I enjoy it even mind. better. Yeah. I enjoy it better than smoking because I'm not, I don't enjoy smoking at all. So I just do it for the hat. Uh -huh. So with edibles, I don't get that, that, that feeling in my lungs. Like I'm, I'm out of breath and it's a better high. I think. Well, I, I made a massive mistake um, mm. the last week or the week before. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I, I've been listening to too much Joe Rogan show, but yeah. Um, <laughs> So I tried, have you guys heard of Zen? I, I'm sure you haven't because you're two fully grown men, one that lives in the jungle, of mm. the jungles of Panama. Mm -hmm. But have you guys heard of uh, Zen pouches? They're like nicotine replacement pouches. Actually, no. I've heard of those. Yeah. No. Yeah, okay. Tucker Carlson also is sort of addicted to them apparently. But mm -hmm. I, I heard tell that they were good for uh, focus and things like that. Mm. I was like, okay, okay, interesting. And I don't smoke cigarettes. Um, I've tried it on and off, and I say try. It's like when I worked at a strip club, I kept a pack on mm. me, but I've I've literally never felt the urge. It was just like, I'm going to carry this around for two weeks and give it a try. And it's like, well, this isn't doing anything. So I just stopped. But uh, So I'm my body does not do well with nicotine, apparently, because I threw mm. one of those pouches in yeah, it was. I, I probably should have got a three milligram, but I I don't know what I'm doing right, so I just grabbed whatever, and it was a six milligram, and I put one pouch in my mouth for like ten to fifteen minutes, and probably ten minutes in, dude, like I started getting very lightheaded and uh, felt like I was in a fishbowl, like my whole body was just slumping. Oh, I was like, no, sort of like a jellyfish. I was walking oh. around like a jellyfish, dancing in my house, you know, just talking to my girlfriend. I'm like, woo. I have and something then, uh, to add to this conversation. Well, um, well, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, so basically what ends up happening is like 20 minutes later, um, I have to take an absolutely absurd shit, and then I throw it <laughs> all over myself, projectile nice. vomiting. And then I was laid up in the bed 
uh, trying to sleep with just a ramming headache for probably oh, it, uh, probably until about twelve that night until I was able to finally just crash. That like, sounds it riveting, me up, dude. It it was that not so much fun. That sounds like so much fun. Um, it was horrible. I, I quit smoking cigarettes a long time ago. Not everybody knows I still smoke, but every now and then I will smoke a cigarette to remind myself why I quit. I really mm. can't it. If you smoke one after not having smoked one for a long time, you gotta look at yourself and you're like, "What the fuck was I thinking?" You know. But the other day, yeah, somebody was here and that had cigarettes. I was like, let me get one of those because it had been two, three months since I smoked a cigarette. I needed to remind myself why I don't smoke anymore. Only she smokes Newports. Oh. oh got me high, boy. <laughs> Is that what they do? Yeah. Newports get you high? I don't know. No, dude, that shit got me high as hell. I was like, might as well just My girlfriend's it. black, but she doesn't smoke cigarettes at all, so there's no Newports uh, to, to speak of. Oh, those things are hardcore, dude. Nicotine will give you a buzz. Like, if oh, you've yeah. never smoked and you just smoke like a, a cigarette, you'll get a buzz. I, I've never understood smoking because past, like, I don't know, the first couple of days of smoking, you probably don't even get a buzz anymore. And then it's mm. just addiction for 30 years. It, yeah. it, it's, it's, smoking is the weirdest thing to me. Well, yeah, my, my brother, my brother had a really hard time kicking that habit, but he already stopped. That's what I hear. Yeah. I mean, I like seventeen years, and then quit for eight years, and then smoked for like five, and then quit again. Um, but I don't have a very addictive personality. It's like I pretty mm. much have left all all the good stuff behind except weed. <laughs> <You know? laughs> <laughs> Without you know, I mean, I don't get all messed up on it. Where I got, 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 got weed. I kind of got to have because that's my anxiety mess medicine. You know what I mean? Keeps me kind of. I accidentally bit. smoked a little bit of crack one time. I could tell that. Oh story. man! Whoa! Okay. How do you accidentally? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It was like, truly yeah. an accident. That's like tripping and falling on a dick, Dinch. Yeah. <laughs> it's like two Indian guys blowing each other. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> accident. Mm -hmm. that's hey, that no was accident, an accident. Yeah. No, I mean, I could tell the story, but you guys want to hear the story? I don't know. You want to hear the story? <laughs> I'm still right, trying so, to get over the first story. Right. Mm. No, I mean, that's fair. This this yeah. one look so at the time this was right after that basically this was like right after I I got high so my best friend also worked at that nightclub and then he got hired at the strip club and then like two weeks later the DJ quit so I got offered the job and was like absolutely um, so fast forward to like six months there um, maybe I don't know I worked there for two years so maybe somewhere around a year six months something like that. Still very naive. I think I was like 22 or 23 at the time. I'm 31 now for reference. Um, so, and I had, so, and it was pretty much the Wild West there. Like the oldest guy running the show was at the time 25. And then it was oh, my no. best friend and then me and then a female bartender and then a bunch of strippers. So, I mean, it was, yeah, we were having a blast. But uh, basically, um, this guy the night prior to me accidentally and it was just the tiniest bit of accidental here um mm -hmm. so this guy who was friends with one of the girls this tall skinny black dude they called slim um was at the club the night before. Slim. every yeah. time slim i know yeah, yeah. He's, he, is, slim. He, he is a slim type dude i mean this is the story but oh, no he was like he, he was friends with one of the girls that was like one of my main sort of capos, if you will. Like you have a couple mm. of girls that you can trust that keep you abreast of situations. And you know that some of them play you so that, you know, you'll turn your back a little bit on what they're doing. And this girl happened to be one of those. Right. And uh, so but I trusted her enough at the time because I was still new. Right. And I see her having a good time with this guy and, you know, everything's all good. And then the next night around 12 o'clock ish, um, it's the club is slow. And if the club is slow at midnight, I was allowed to go out and take a smoke break in my car. I'd go smoke a blunt in my car and then come back in. 
And uh, so I'm standing outside, sort of just at the front door, kicking around some rocks. And uh, I see Slim coming down the road. He's on a bicycle. He's wearing, he's got a white t-shirt. He's got on dirty blue jeans and he's got a yeah. yellow or he's got an orange reflective vest on. So first thing that came to mind, there's like, is this dude getting out of construction or something like this dude, a construction worker. And uh, yeah, he pulls up to me and is like, you know, Hey brother. I was like, Hey, he's slim. You know, how you doing? Blah, blah, blah. I was like, you coming inside and he's like, slim. he's slim. like, he's like, He's like, nah, man, you got a bowl piece? And he's like, a bowl piece. That's what he said to me. And I was like, uh, yeah, actually, right? I keep one in my car. Or I did at the time. And uh, so I assumed we were going to smoke some weed. And, uh, so, like, right, <laughs> like, sure. and uh, so we go back to the car. He brings his bicycle with him and uh, just sort of sets it outside. Right. right. We get in. You I pull out my bowl. No, not a, not, not, not a crackhead. That's... You can't, the really, mm. but no. Yeah. So this guy, he, I hand him my bowl. He, he packs it. I figure, okay, all right. You know, he asked for it. He's gonna pack it, and then uh, he does, and then he sits there and he hits it, all right, and then he hits it again, and I'm like, all right, makes sense. It's his stuff, right? A puff, puff, and then a pass, right? Hits mm -hmm. it a third time, and I'm, I'm like, okay, sure, it's his stuff. Hits it like two more times. And then just hands the bowl back to me, gets out of my car. He's like, thanks. And then disappears. And I look at the bowl and it's like, there's just like a little bit of like ash in there. I'm like, all right, well, let me see if I can get something out of here. And I just run my lighter over it. Right. And uh, nothing really, no, no taste, but about mm, probably then the next couple minutes, I'd say my lips start to feel a little numb. And I'm like, hmm, <laughs> I think that was crack or oh, at the very least cocaine. Hey. Oh no! <laughs> Nothing happened. I mean, they they stopped being numb like two minutes later. But I mean, it was uh -huh. literally the most minuscule amount. But that's, that's one of those really moments, though, where I'm like, I'm lucky that guy didn't just stab me and steal my car. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. it's very stupid. Yeah, this is like you were cordial to him, so there, yeah, there I'm no... a nice guy. I'll smoke weed yeah. with a stranger. What, yeah, no, you smoke crack with strangers. Yeah. I've smoked okay. weed with strangers too. Just to clarify, yeah, uh, I've done more of that. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's. I mean, I don't know. I could go on and probably make myself sound horrible, but I don't know. I'm I, yeah. I'm a naive guy that finds himself in stupid situations because of it. It's, That's it's funny, been man. very lucky. Yesterday, yeah. my son and I were having a conversation because um, this this smoking apparatus right here. It's a dugout, one hitter, right? Mm -hmm. I've had it for 30 years. It's been all over the country. It's on, been on airplanes. It's been on trains. It's been at concerts. It's been, it's been everywhere. Concerts, sporting events, golf courses. It, we're just sitting here and, and talking about it. It's like everybody he knows is hit it. Everybody I know is hit it. That's a lot of fucking people. Um, thousands of people have hit this thing. Strangers I never saw again. At concerts, it's like we were sitting there thinking about it. He goes, Dad, thousands of lips have been on that. That's kind of gross. <laughs> yeah, dude, that, that, that sounds like a venereal disease story. <laughs> dude, I don't know. 30 years. Like, this this, pop span this gave me herpes. Yeah. yeah, like this gave me herpes, guys. <laughs> All right, guys. Speaking of herpes, though, I think that's a good, a good <laughs> note. For what do you say, boy? Yeah. Yeah. We'll pass an hour here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, but yeah, we'll go ahead and enter. We usually maybe we'll extend the shows in the future, but I do got some dogs mm -hmm. to feed here. I'm getting the stink eye. Yeah. Feed the dogs. I, let me I, I got I got the outro, bro. Say your thing and me, I'll play some stuff. Yeah, let me come back to reality here. There's daddy. Okay. Well, everybody, that was a fun show. I revealed yeah. way too much. We got <laughs> we went from philosophical way, yeah. to you know, Pimps. things I hope we all sort of forget, but hey. The smoking cracks, yeah. Just... The, exi the existence of God to Indians blowing each other, violent dolphins. <laughs> yeah. He covered it all. Dude, all of it. Yeah. All so, of it. Love that. so, as you can see, guys, this is the new tone for the Jin Chen Pedro show for 2024. I I'm hope you enjoy it because you're going to be way more of that. Way more of this. So, yeah. we're going to have I guests. Hope... Yeah. But. <laughs> 
Hopefully my name doesn't come up on any of the flight logs. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> probably. You have made a couple of lists. I'm I meant saying. to discuss that. We'll have to talk about that next week. Ron, you're welcome yeah. to come yeah. back if you want, buddy. I don't want to obligate you, you yeah, to it. A, no, a you know what? Plan, Honestly, but... I would love to. Remind me, okay? Because I do forget. Dude, but remind sure. me. I'll, I'll, awesome. I would love to come on again. Absolutely. Thank Wonderful. you so much. Yeah. So let's say goodbye to the chat real quick. Chris Fisk. Yeah. Have a good one, everybody. Hey, you too, man. And and definitely come on the show this year. He's got some exciting stuff going on. So Shadow Hawk. This is what I could do. This is Rex what I could do. What's up? During the show as we were talking. So mm. not much. But yeah. All good, brother. Looks good. I might get I might get to finish it. The Valiant Angels. Let's go. Yeah. Life was in yeah. Kaiju coming this year. Oh yeah. Look at you. Guessing you have an allergic reaction. I'm not sure what it is, but yeah. yeah. Then your girl ain't black. She's a yeah, huge I'm Trump supporter. Huge, huge yeah. Trump supporter. Loves him. Hey, dude, like a lot of black folk love Trump. They you do. Yeah, they do. They do, we but her parents, ass. man. The first America, time I walked into their house, bro, it was like you're greeted with a framed Trump. picture of Obama on the wall. It's like her, her family's kind of in it. But uh, I, have a, I have an aunt with like that, like old Obama file, just a framed picture of Obama on the wall. It's like the first yeah. thing you see before grandma, grandpa. It was Obama. I was like, All right, this is Dude, like, okay. Panama, Panama had, had his first black president in 1924. Wow, one of our first black president, and he got wow, he sucked at it. Yeah. Nothing yeah, to do with skin color, name. of course. Let's not get too crazy yeah. here. Did, yeah. Do they remember his name, Pedro? Uh, Belisario Porras. Okay. Well, just as long as they remember his name. He was either so good or so bad. Yeah. They no. his name, right? No, they, they, they shot at him, but missed. They missed <laughs> him, like this much. Yeah. yeah. It was that bad. <laughs> All right, everybody. So um, we will see you guys next week. On the Ginger Pedro guys. show. Absolutely. Bye, everyone. Kick it. Yeah. Kick it.